يا غصن نقام كل لم بالذهب أفديك من الرداب أمي وأبي يا غصن نقام كل لم بالذهب أفديك من الرداب أمي وأبي إن كنت أسأت في هواكم أدبي إن كنت أسأت في هواكم أدبي فالعصمة لا تكون إلا لنبي Repeat after me. I'm going to sing each phrase twice. Listen the first time and sing along with me the second time. Yalini Yalin Yalini Yalin Yalin So today we are doing a review of the Maqam Sika family of Maqamat. I just recorded the last four lessons on six Maqamat in this family. There are six Maqamat that we recognize um, as distinctive within the Maqam family. And I'm going to review all of those today, uh, as well as have a discussion about the physicality of Maqam. I want to emphasize this the physicality rather than the abstraction of maqam, because maqam is a physical entity rather than an abstraction. So we're going to discuss that a little bit and use it as a framework for reviewing this maqam family and comparing the different versions of the uh, maqamat in Sikha. Before I do, do that, I want to give a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. Uh, I've gotten some new supporters in the last couple of weeks. Really grateful to you guys as well as everyone who's been supporting from the beginning and who's been joining at any time. Uh, it's been really heartening to me to have this support for this series of lessons. And that support enables me to keep making it free, available on YouTube, so anyone anywhere in the world can uh, learn about Macam for free. Um, so if you can support that, if you are able to pay for it, then I encourage you to do so via the link below. In addition to supporting this project and helping me keep going, you will also get some bonus lessons um, that are available only for Patreon supporters. They're uh, the same basic content that we're doing here, but 
uh, in different keys than I play on the YouTube lessons, just so you get an experience of different keys and so on and so forth. So thank you for that. Uh, thanks to everyone who's liking and subscribing and sharing these videos. I'm really grateful to all of you. Um, I really enjoy doing this. Those of you who've been watching can probably tell. So um, I'm grateful to be able to spread that joy to other people. So can you remember the tonic from all that talking? Let's just sing the tonic for a second. Uh, uh, and one of those melody words that I use to open. Yalil, 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 singing this tonic. So now what I did here and what I've been doing in all these lessons is we repeated just a, a small number of melodies over and over again to help get us in the mood of this tonic, uh, in the mood of this uh, maqam and in the mood of the jints that we're starting with. We start with jints sika, which is really these three notes. One, two, three. One being the tonic. One, and then counting up together is one, two, three. Melodies in Jin Sika also still use one, seven, one, the note underneath the tonic. You can hear this wants to go up. If I land here, it comes down. And we can also use this note one, two, three, four, five, three, two, one, in melodies that still are tonicizing this Sika tonic. Now, I want to speak a little bit about the physicality of this. So, maqam is a physical skill. It's not just an abstraction. And it's not just that maqam as a concept is a physical skill. Each maqam is a physical skill. It's like learning a style of dance or, or learning, uh, I think about climbing a mountain. It's, it's like a skill that you are navigating something physical. And how is it physical? So there are a couple of different ways that it's physical. And the first is probably the most obvious to beginners is the challenge in executing intervals. So this interval just between one and two, one, two, one. This interval is like a three quarter interval if you want to compare it to the Western scale. It's not exactly three quarters of anything. Um, there is a problem with that way of thinking, um, but it is roughly three quarters of what would be considered a whole tone on the piano. So it's bigger than a whole uh, a half step and smaller than a whole step. Now, in my own experience playing the violin and in the experience of students that I've taught, just playing that interval is a challenge in and of itself if you are tuned, if you're trained in Western music. Because your muscle memory doesn't want to execute this particular interval between, sorry. You want to either do a, whole, a half step or a whole step. So your fingers, the, the experience of these fingers, when you start to do this, I found for myself that when I tune this finger correctly, then the, this, this finger goes uh, out of tune because my muscle memory doesn't recognize the three quarter interval between the two fingers. It only recognizes the half and the whole. So it's bigger than half. So this, this tends to go sharp. And I noticed this in myself when I was first learning Arabic music 24 years ago. Um, and I notice it in my students that I have, that I've had over the years, that muscle memory is, is an issue and that reveals the physicality of the skill of just executing that interval. 
So uh, I'm going to create a few lessons coming up after this one where we focus back again on the physicality of that because I've had some recent students that have reminded me of the need to really focus on that. You can just sing it. Now, the second aspect of this physicality is that it's different from the violin to the voice or whatever you're playing. Maybe you're playing oud, maybe you're playing nine. Uh, just sing that. Uh, and I have emphasized in some past lessons the need to um, use different vowel sounds. E because, again, the physicality, this is a muscular skill in the mouth, in the throat, in the lungs, in the stomach. You're using your whole body when you're producing sound. And you need to make adjustments. Ooh, e and it's a different skill from the, the voice than it is for the violin or the oud. Now, that difference um, is important because it's an aspect of memory. So in order to do this well, you have to remember, your, your fingers have to remember where to go, or your throat has to remember how to produce sound, and your ears have to remember what the sound is supposed to sound like. So you're actually storing something in memory in multiple locations that are supposed to be linked to each other. So there's actually a communication system that's being set up in your own brain and body in order to be able to execute these intervals. Again, this has become obvious to me because this is a music that I learned as an adult. I started learning it um, as a 22-year-old, and um, it took me some time to practice because I didn't learn it as a child. So uh, I've become very conscious of this, and a lot of my students are also learning um, after having learned some other kinds of music. So it becomes very clear. I'm sure that for many of you, that's the same case. If you have difficulty, then it forces you to recognize what is the, what is the specific challenge. And it is a memory challenge. It is a challenge of storing something in memory. And memory is a physical entity. Memory requires that your brain actually change physically. Something is being encoded in the brain, written into brain cells and synapses between brain cells that is enabling these specific connections and into the neurons that are connected to your body, to your throat, to your fingers, neurons that pass from your spine. So there's encoding that's happening physically in your body and in your brain that is enabling this to happen. And that encoding, which is a communication system, requires time, it requires energy, and as a result, there is a need that it be as efficient as possible. And that gets into the next phase of what we're going to talk about. I'm trying to explain why I do these lessons as I do, kind of in a sense. The requirement that the oral, the, 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 the sound memory, and the physical memory be linked, and that those systems be in communication with each other and be synchronized means that there needs to be efficient communication. Now, I'm not going to get too much into it, but the Mathematical Theory of Communication by Claude Shannon, the first book in information theory, establishes some mathematical principles for this type of communication. I'm not going to talk about the math. What I'm going to talk about is the fact that this type of communication, which includes human language, and in fact includes the kind of codes that are sent over the computer, right, digital code, and it includes DNA coding, follow rules based on efficiency. And there's also rules based on the fact that messages can be confused, meaning that there are errors that happen in communication. So you need to have something called redundancy where there's some level of repetition built in. All of these factors, all of these actually physical limitations on communication, meaning the physicality of errors happening, of noise creeping in, the physicality of needing to communicate between systems, means that communication systems organize themselves into higher levels. Now this fact that's well understood about language and is 
and is <laughs> really uh, the crucial factor in the fact that you actually can, instead of meeting me in person for this lesson, you can actually see it digitally, it can be encoded digitally and be sent to you. The entire digital revolution is based on this knowledge of encoding at higher levels. And the fact that this is known in linguistics and in computer science, but is not well understood in music, is a problem for music theory. In other words, there's not a universal understanding in music theory that, that music is not based on rules, but is actually based on a vocabulary that is encoded into uh, bodies and brains. In other words, Makam Sik is not just these notes, it is these melodies. Now, hopefully we've done that melody several times, you're starting to recognize it. So if you've taken the other lessons, you'll have heard it in the other lessons, and that repetition is starting to encode it into your brain. Now, this encoding, remember the efficiency is between the oral and the sound, and in communicating to other people who are listening, because this is a multi-way communication system where people are hearing and responding and they need to be able to respond and recognize it as being the same entity that you communicated to them. That's how communication works. I communicate something, you receive it, there's some equivalence. So we're talking about the encoding on multiple levels between bodies, minds, brains of multiple people, and it is this encoding of communication into words, larger structures, not just note to note, that makes it possible. But the requirement is that both sides of the communication have to have the words stored in memory so that they can call upon words. In other words, if you recognize this as a melody word, and I do something like this, You just heard that melody is having something and then followed by the other, the melody word we've been talking about. And if you recognize this as a particular melody word within Sika, right? It's, it's simple, but it is, it is a distinctive melody. And you hear that a lot. Instead of doing however many notes that was, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? We don't need to count notes because we're hearing it at a higher level of communication. I need to have it encoded, those melody words, in my ear memory, in my muscle memory. In other words, the skill of executing not just this interval, but the skill of executing this phrase. Same skill required in the voice. Yenin. Let's sing it again. Yenin. And the other one. Yenin. 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 And let's put them together. Yenin. 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 By now, maybe you're getting sick of it. Maybe you're getting bored of it. Boredom means that it's been encoded enough into your brain that it's starting to be more incorporated. Boredom is actually good in this instance. Now, this shouldn't be a revelation. Anyone who's spent time practicing music or learning a song has been taught that, oh, you don't just play through the whole song note by note by note. You actually have to take chunks of it and practice those chunks from a physical point of view, um, in order to get good at it. So if I were to take the song, yeah, that we started with, it may not be easy to just learn that whole thing all at once. You might have to do this drum. And that will train not only the, the execution of that melody, but the, this particular interval that is not a Western interval. It's like a small augmented second. And then the next part. And then you put them together. And the next part. Right? 
Right, that one's harder. Because the, the, the first finger for me on this violin, now this is particular to this, it may be different on the voice. Uh, you have to train each part of the melody and you start to recognize them. Oh, okay, then I hear this part of the melody in a different song. And you start to recognize that they're, they're these actual words, that they're, they're little components. People call them motifs, people call them crips in jazz, people call them whatever. I call them words because I want you to understand that, that there is a vocabulary of thousands of these, and that is what makes up the makam. But it is a vocabulary that is physical, right? It is physical memory encoding, physical muscle memory and physical um, oral memory, and those all have to be linked in order for this to work. Now, um, the other aspect uh, is I've been using repertory to explain these makamat. And if you review the makamat in this Sika family, I've used probably, analyzed about probably 20 different songs. Um, in this Makam family. Um, and I, I myself probably know another 20 songs that I didn't analyze for you, know on some level. And this is one of, of many Makamat. I've known this Makam for uh, whatever, 22, 23, maybe 24 years, right? I've been practicing it for that long. And still, with that amount of time practicing it, I felt, particularly with Makam Bastenikar, which is the rarest and most difficult of the Makamat in this family, I need to really review the repertory. There's some repertory I need to learn that I didn't know, like the song Zalamu. I knew how to play it on the violin 20 years ago, but I never learned to sing the whole thing. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to show these people Makam Bastenikar if I can't sing Zalamu. Right? That's my belief. I can't. I can't teach it to you if I can't do it. And not just Zalamu, Nuzhat al Arwahi Badri. I learned the Egyptian song, um, Wahawi, Wahawi, to, to do that. So those songs that were in the Bastanikar, I spent time learning them. And I've spent 20 years, more than 20 years, um, playing this maqam. And still, I needed more physical practice to show it to you. Right? And. The repertory is a key, right? The repertory, which are melodies that we can remember. And once you start to remember those melodies, not only in your ear, but in your fingers or in your throat, that memory is actually giving you the chunks of melody that you need for improvisation or for composing if you want to compose new songs, right? So all of that is physical. The repertory is physically stored in your brain. It is made up of smaller chunks, right? The bigger melodies are made up of smaller melodies. And there's that execution between the different levels. So that is the, the reason that repertory is very important. Um, so if just as a, as a sort of a pedagogical tip for you, um, when you're learning this, if you're studying along with my lessons, my lessons are not enough. You need to also go and learn some of the repertory that I'm talking about. Not only uh, learn it in a practical way, like learn some of the pieces by ear, uh, but also listen to a lot of it. And I've created these playlists. There's a Makam Hosam Sika Bastenikar playlist, the Makam Iraq playlist. Um, listen over and over again to these songs because you need to develop that oral memory and then practice not just whole songs, parts of songs. Practice the parts that are challenging for you. Build up that muscle memory. The repertory encodes the maqam for you, and that's why I use it. It's not just like, oh, it'll help you. No, it is actually an essential, it is the maqam. The maqam is the sum total of the repertory, both songs and improvisatory vocabulary. That is the maqam. The maqam is this huge physical entity that lives in the brains of practitioners. That's what a maqam is. It's not just a, a set of notes and it's not even a, a set of a, a diagram. Right? This is our diagram for today. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
Um, so this, this fact that there's a repertory and this fact that there are some things that are harder and some things that are easier creates, um, the word that's coming to me is an imbalance. It is what it is. Some parts of the repertory are more common than others. In the Maqam family of Sika, Maqam Hosam is the most common. Maqam Hussam, which has Hijaz on the third scale degree. One, two, three. So far in this lesson, I've only used that Hijaz, Hijaz, Sika. Now, if this is the most calm, uh, <laughs> the most common maqam in this family, and most of the songs are using this. And I learned a bunch of songs that my fingers are more fluent in playing Hijaz relative to Sika than they are, for example, in playing Saba. For maqam Bastanikar. So if I play Huzam more, then it's more fluent, then my fingers are more likely to do it without thinking. So if I'm just like, oh, I just want to do whatever I want, I want to start playing, I'm just automatically going to do something like But if I want to do Bastenikar, like I just told you, I spent a month reviewing for the last lesson, actually two months, um, probably more than that. Um, I was preparing in advance while I was reviewing the material for Makam Iraq, which was also a challenge. But this that sequence of intervals that scale those melodies were something I needed to review and they don't come as naturally so the reason I, I bring this up is that essentially the frequency of particular melodies within the repertory and a particular muhammad reproduces itself over time. Because what happens a lot, what is common, becomes easy because it's repeated a lot. And what happens infrequently is difficult because it's repeated infrequently. So there's this perpetuation of the relative frequency of different parts of the vocabulary based on just their continuing like that. So that means, what that means is that the people in the community who are learning it all develop the same kind of sense in their brains. I have more brain space taken up by Huzam than by Bastenikar. And so does everyone else in the Arabic music community. I have more brain space taken up by this connection between Hijaz and Sika than between Saba and Sika. And this is what keeps the sound of the Makam system pretty similar. Now, obviously change happens. In other words, I've changed myself physically already by spending more time on Bastenikar in the last two months than I had at any period previous um, during the last 25 years. So I've just changed myself. And you can too. Maybe I'm gonna start to play more Bastenikar than I used to just because of creating these lessons for you. And maybe I might start to, well, okay, let's not say me, because well, there are no, no pop songs in Best Car anymore. There used to be. Um, you know, Zalamu was in a movie, in a film in the 1950s. And Abdul Halim, when he died, uh, people were throwing themselves out of windows. I'm no Abdul Halim. Um, so it, when you have a, a crooner, a popular singer with a beautiful voice, singing something that becomes part of the popular memory of people, it can actually change the community. And that's how music evolves, right? By taking something, but it evolves within this context of already existing repertory that's physical, right? Physically stored in the memory, physically stored in the muscle memory, the oral memory, and in the community memory. So that's why change happens gradually. And that's why when people just try to say, oh, okay, I'm just going to take a scale, I'm going to invent a new scale, people aren't going to listen to that. You want to invent a new scale, do what you want. I'm not judging you. But to get a new scale, and these happen, new scales did happen in Egypt in the mid-20th century, 
Uh, the great example that we gave in Mokham Iraq for Sir Tohob is this scalar sequence. That was a new scalar sequence when uh, Bali Handi composed it for Sirta Hob in 1960. It was made possible because it was the most popular singer in the Arab world, Um Kulthum, doing it. He did it in a way that was natural to the other things, so he didn't create something and just like throw totally new melodies. He used typical melodies that were already expected for that maqam. So you can see how the role of expectation, we've talked about that in an abstract way in previous lessons. The role of expectation is based on the physicality, the physicality of how much of this you're used to and how much of it you uh, is rare. So that, I would say, the frequency of a particular jintz in the repertory within the maqam family roughly corresponds to how easy it is how likely you are to do it, how good you're going to be at it, right? All of these things are correlated. Learning, how, how, learning, execution, hearing, and repertory, they're all correlated. They're all linked as a communication system. It's a multi-level communication system. Um, yeah, I wanted to give uh, this example. I was talking about Bastenikar, and, and let's focus on one particular phrase to illustrate this particular challenge. So we were doing one of the songs that we did was Amwasha uh, Nuzhatul Arwahi Bedri. And the new version, well, not new. There are two versions. The one that I knew 20 years ago, Nuzhatul Arwahi, Nuzhatul Arwahi Bedri, Qandu Bil Ghusni Yuzri. That's the one that I knew. The new one that I knew to me, Nuzhatul Arwah Hibadri. Okay. This phrase. Now, I'm playing C half sharp, but we're playing C on C half sharp in this lesson. C half sharp. Um. What was that D natural, E natural, F half sharp, G natural, A flat, G, F half sharp, E, D, C half sharp. This interval C half sharp to A flat. It's like a slightly bigger than a fifth. It's very out of tune. It's not something that you could just learn and, oh, I can do that interval. And it occurs, that interval, that jump actually occurs in the song. There it is. That's hard. It's hard on the violin. Even singing that scalar sent, uh, uh, phrase down, Nuzhatul Arwahi Badri. Try it with me. Nuzhatul Arwahi Badri. It's relying on that combination of ear memory because you want to remember this note. Oh, and you're remembering this note, the C half sharp and the low A flat, right? You're remembering them in the context. You're remembering them in the melodic context, and then you're able to put them together. So it was a challenge for me. And really working on this song and working on the songs in Best Denny Car really revealed to me the importance of focusing on this aspect of physicality for you. Um, it was a good reminder to myself because when I learn a new song, I, this is what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with encoding the song 
into my fingers or into my voice or both usually and into my ears and coordinating that. And that's what practices practices, this act of coordinating the different, uh, the different stops in the communication system, coordinating the ear memory to the, uh, muscle memory, right? Coordinating the muscles to the neurons, to the, uh, to the eardrum, right? They all have to be coordinated to each other in a way that's accurate to the music and is going to communicate to other people who have heard the music that recognize it as Bastenikar. So I can be as accurate as I want. If you've never heard Bastenikar before, if you've never heard these songs before, it's going to be like, okay, I don't parse it, right? So it has to be in your communication system too, to even understand it. Um, so yeah. So in a sense, what I'm saying is that this maqam is not abstract. And I present it as an abstraction here, and I can say, in maqam Sika family, we can go to all these places. But I use the word can, and I said this in the Bastenikar lesson. Just because you can, what does can mean? Can means you're able to. means you have the skill of playing saba. Saba is not easy. So it was harder than Hejaz, just in and of itself, putting aside Bastanikar. Not only you have the skill of doing Saba, you have the skill of connecting Saba to Sika. You have the skill of connecting Sika to Ras up here. All of these, every one of these things, there's the skill of the melodies in Sika. There's the skill of the melodies in Hejaz. There's the skill of the connection between them. Every aspect of this graph represents, even though it's an abstraction, it represents something that's physically in my memory. And to the point that uh, I was making before, some are going to be more common than others. If I really made this graph based on what's common, you'd see this stuff in the middle, and I put it in the middle for this reason, as being huge and this stuff being very small. Because that's how it is in the repertory. That's how it is in my brain. That's how it is in everyone else's brain. So it's not just that it's equal. People often use the um, Makam family as a tree. So I made a little tree drawing. I hope you like my little drawings, <laughs> right? For the Makam Sika family, um, right? Not all branches are equal. There's a main trunk, which has the Sika, the Hijaz, rust on six, right? The Makam Sika connects back here, right? But these are rare, Mustahar is rare. Nahawand is rare. It's just like a little branch off to the side, right? Bayati is pretty common, but Saba, it's way off here. That branch could fall off easily and you'd still have a tree. So what, what came to me when I, um, when I thought about this was everyone's tree is different, right? What I spend time doing, what you spend time doing may be different. So although overall there's going to be some coordination if we're both playing in the same genre, in the same, right? Everyone's a little bit different. Um, I just have to do this because some people like watching my videos on Instagram where I show my, my view outside Forest Parkway here in, in Queens where I live. Right? These trees. So there's, there's multiple trees across the street from me. Probably because I've been living inside in quarantine for two years. And these are my best friends. Anyway, you notice they're the same kind of tree, but they're a little different. And that's... You know, they, they may have uh, almost the same genetic code. Um, but how, where, you know, you see those little branches. How does the branch come here? How does it come there, right? What makes it go here and there? It's a combination of the code that's in there and the environmental factors that cause it to do something. And, and there was environmental factors could include the climate, could also include the fact that this is New York City and that there are workers who are trimming it. Uh, it could be that there are birds sitting in it. Any, everything that is affecting the tree, all these environmental factors, are leading to the shape of the tree. And the Makam tree that I showed you, where did I even put my silly little dry? Okay. Right? This Makam tree, as I drew it today, is representing roughly my knowledge, but it's, you know, it's different for everybody. So, with that understanding, thank you for your patience. I hope that you enjoyed my little lecture. Or maybe you fast-forwarded to this point. 
because you're watching this video again. Now let's get into it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to review all of Makam Sika, all the parts of it, roughly in the proportion that it's coming up to me. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of improvise. I mean, I improvise all of these lessons for you because I'm, I'm doing something that is, why is my improvisation okay? Because the frequency in which I'm going to expect to do things is roughly the frequency that exists in the repertory. So I am, I have through my 24 years of practice brought myself to a, a broad understanding of the repertory of the Takasim. I know things in proportion as most people do. I can go and play with other Arab musicians and I'm not going to sound like I'm totally off, right? I'm going to be able to play what they play. They're going to be able to play what I play. We know a lot of songs in common and our style of improvisation is going to be pretty similar, especially those here in the United States, those who like me, know both Egyptian and Syrian repertory, right? I'm going to be a little off from someone who's only lived in Egypt and only knows Egyptian repertory. I'm like the Americans uh, or Europeans who, because of our diasporas, right, I'm Palestinian, but I lived in Egypt and Syria. I studied music there. Most of the repertory that's called Arabic music is actually Egyptian and Syrian music. I know a little Iraqi music, but nowhere near compared to what I know of Egyptian and Syrian music. So that experience, which is shared by a lot of musicians, um, means that we have this common vocabulary. So I can just improvise, and you're going to get roughly the proportions as they should be. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I chose this key, um, C half sharp, would be as if we have rust on A. Rust on A. C on C half sharp. And then the, the, the first pivot note being the E. And then the A again, E, C half sharp. So first I'm just going to do it. Um, and I want you to sort of do your best to notice what jints I'm in. I'm not going to speak about it too much. I'm going to go through the whole maqam once without uh, speaking about it. Then the second time I will speak about each jints and then we'll do it a third time where we actually look at the charts and really kind of get a picture of those charts again. So as we always do, I'll sing a phrase twice. You repeat the second time. Listen the first time. Yenin, 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 yenin,
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
likely to encounter in this Makam family, all as one long improvisation. Now, it's worth saying that this does happen. So in other words, if I'm going to do a long improvisation in Makam Hosam, I could use the whole family. And there's a great example on, of this um, in in the playlist. Uh, there's a, a sheikh... Um, Muhammad Nadi, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mistaking his name. But it's one of the versions of um, Zakari Ahmed's Dor Intafahim. And he does a 12 minute improvisation in Huzan before this Dor. And he goes through not everything, he doesn't do any Bastenikar. But he does a lot of um, Iraq, the Bayati, and he even uses that. Um, uh, the Bayati Shuri on the on the third of Sika. He uses a lot of Mustar. He uses Sika and he uses that Jiharka that I did on the sixth. So he actually in this the course of this long improvisation goes through all of these um, steps. If you listen to it, it's great. If you can speak Arabic, you'll get a lot out of the fact, the way that the, the listeners are commenting on what he's doing. And there's one phrase that he does that's a really strong, unusual phrase. And they comment on the fact that he invented the phrase. Or did he learn that phrase from someone? Where did you hear that phrase? What does that mean? That means that every other phrase he did, they all know. right? If they're commenting that one of the phrases is one he must have invented then everything else is something that they know, that they have heard others do, the shared vocabulary. And this is where the invention comes in. You invent one phrase in the middle of 12 minutes, and it's like, oh, that's so amazing. And of course, that invented phrase is still made up of chunks that they know, so they recognize it as fitting within the framework. So let me do this again, and let's talk about it. Actually, I'm going to talk about it with the chart, just because then it'll be a little easier. I'll probably slip in pitch, but that's, it is what it is. Oh, maybe I'll keep the violin here. Yanin, 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 Yanini Hijaz Hijaz Sika Sika Yanin Yanin Fifth scale degree Yan Yan Yanin Yanin I'm using the upper rust yelling. Six, five, four, five, six. 
Six, seven, eight, seven, six. Rust. Yeah. 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 Using the Eldridge melody. Yeah. Six, eight. Yeah, nine. This is seek on eight, nine, ten, nine, eight. Yeah, nine, yeah, nine, nine, yeah, nine, yeah, nine. I came down from the eight, from the ten, nine, eight, flat eight, seven, six. Now on on six. Yeah, nine. Now on. No one, yeah, no one, no one, yeah, no one, yeah, nin, yeah, nin, yeah, nin. coming down in hijaz, hijaz, seeka, seeka, yeah, nin. Mustar, Mustar, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, four, five, four, three, Naha, one, don, three, Naha, one, don, three, Mustar, Mustar, Naha, one, Yanin, 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 back to the rust on six, Yanin, yeah, Yanin, yeah. Yeah, nee, yeah, nee, nee. Let's do that whole longer phrase. Yeah, nee, yeah, nee, yeah, nee, yeah, nee. This would be like a classic melody in Maqam Sika as opposed to Maqam Hosam, because I use the upper rust rather than the Hejaz. Yeah, nee, yeah, nee. As opposed to if I came down in Hosam. Yeah, nin. Yeah, nin. Now, you see, we've already done a few minutes and how much of the chart I've used and not used. I didn't even touch the bayati yet. You'll notice if you go back to what I did before that I did bayati almost immediately, early in the last improvisation. And here I haven't touched it yet. I went to Mustar first, whereas I did Mustar later. Maybe we feel like going to Bayati, or maybe not. Maybe I'm still in the mood of Sika. Yeah, nee, nee. Let's see how my pitch is. Oh, pretty good. Yeah, nee, nee, yeah, nee. Yeah, nee, nee, yeah, nee. Yeah, nee. Yeah, nee. This is like Makam Kirden going down, but it's part of Makam Sika. 
Just made a dramatic change by getting to that bayati. Saba changed it into Saba. Back to Bayati. Three, four, five, six, as opposed to three, four, five, six. Saba. Bayati. Sing that again. Saba. Bayati. Yani. Naha one on six relative to the bayati Yanin 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 Back to rust. Yelin, 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 jazz, bayati, sika. Yelin, 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 this is the flat eight ajaman flat eight eight seven six five four three two one eight flat eight that's a, another interval that's hard to sing right <laughs> it's like a, a quarter diminished octave. Yanin. I constantly need to reference. Let's see. Yeah, good. I'm still on pitch. Yanin. Yanin. Yeah. Yeah. Yanin. 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 I'm in the crease on flat eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Da, 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 da. Ah, ah, yanin, 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 yanin. نزهت الأرواح بدري قدوا بالغصن يزري نزهت الأرواح بدري قدوا بالغصن يزري من سناعيني سحري فوات أين آه 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 Seek on the octave. Ja'ani yawm as-sabaha Fa'mala qalbi irtiyaha Wa bisir Ajam wa bisir al-lahzi Nakriz lahzi baha hijaz Mubdiyam min unshiraha sabah that was the Mu'ashah we went over in the Maqam Bastanikar lesson. Ah, 
حرموا مني وحرموني حرموا مني وحرموني We have Nahawan, then the fifth scale degree, and then Nahawan Mustar. Haramu amini wa haramuni. Genum aleha. This is upper rust. Genum aleha wa zalamu. Nahawan zalamuni. Haramu amini. La da 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 fifth scale degree five four three two one La da 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 Ahibha wa tahibini Rust on six five four three two one Ahibha wa tahibini Ah سر الغرام لم ينحكي آه سر الغرام نهوا عن سك سبعين ايت فلات ايت سبعين سك سر الغرام لم ينحكي four five that's fifth scale degree six سر الغرام لم ينحكي آه. I forgot the words. نار. Yes, نار. On the fifth scale, we نار وفينا نهوان نار وفينا تشتيل آه. نارفينا تشتيل نار the fire between us is burning up نارفينا تشتيل is it's like exploding the or catching نار is fire نارفينا تشتيل Dait, upper rust, dait, ali, nahawand, ali, na nishtiki, haramu hamini, haramu hamini, oh haramuni, haramu hamini, oh haramuni, جنوم عليها وظلموني حرموها مني. Now I reviewed two of the songs that we did in earlier lessons. حرموها مني from فتيا أحمد is in the lesson for مقام سيكا and مستعار. Obviously that was ending on مستعار every time. And نزهت الأرواح أرواحي بدري is an old موشح. Uh, from Aleppo, and we covered that in the Bestenikar lesson. And I wanted you to notice, as I moved my hand, that we covered a lot of the same ground. They're clearly different maqamat, but they're using some of the same territory. So I have one more chart to show you. And this is really the final point we're about to wrap up this lesson. Um, the maqams are not separate within this family. This stuff in the middle, Sika 1, Hijaz 3, Rust 6, Sika 8, is in every single version of this Maqam family. So this is a central part of the Seyav. Even though you would call this Maqam Hosam, no. This is, Maqam Hosam is this black, big black line. It includes the option to go to Bayati, to Upper Rust, right, which are not really part of the, some of the others, right? Then we have this line, this is Maqam Sika, that's still using the same stuff, right? Maqam Musta'ar and Sika I put together because they're really together in the repertory. It's hard to find Sika without Musta'ar. Yeah, I, I spoke about individual preference and who does what. Muhammad Khairi, for example, does Musta'ar all the time. When he, he like starts right away in Musta'ar sometimes, even though he's doing Hazam. 
so Abdul Hai does musta ar less. He uses it as a dramatic effect. So there's this this choice uh, element here. Anyway, so this is Makam Sika. This is Makam Hosam. Uh, Makam Iraq is this squiggly line, which is using some of the stuff here that is really particular to Makam Bayati. We discussed that in the Makam Iraq lesson. Bayati, when it expands into a Makam, really gives you this Nahawand, as well as Rust, as well as Hijaz, as well as Ajam on flat, you know, relative to that Bayati. So all of this stuff is included in Makam Iraq is this, as well as the fact that Sabla and Bayati are so close to Imam, it's really part of that Makam Iraq. If I was in a big improvisation in Makam Iraq, such as, for example, what we heard, there's an Abdul Wahab, um, I believe it's the Qasida that he sings very early, he was like a, in a, a teenager. He sings this Qasida in Makam Iraq. He doesn't use the Hijaz all, almost at all, but he does one or two phrases in Sabla. Right? That's the only phrase I ever heard in Bastanikar is the phrase in Makam Saba, in Jin Saba, in Abdul Wahab's uh, 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 Qasida. And then Bastanikar, right, you see how I drew this funny line avoiding these elements. Bastanikar, because Saba doesn't use this Hijaz relative to it, doesn't match, nor does it use that Nahawan. So Bastanikar uses this part of the chart, but you still have the option, like in, in Zalamu. If you remember Zalamu Ah, Ah, Zalamu, Zalamu, Il El Bil Khali, Zalamu, Wadu Yizuru, Nahar Maftakaru Yenu, Nisyu Fatu, Atariu Mabli Mainsu, Zalamu, Zalamu. I'm going to jump to the second verse. Uh, because it's, I'm going to show you, right? We notice that the end of each verse, we go to this, this part. So, Seek on the octave. Ah, he's using Maqam Sika. Fifth scale degree, upper rust. Now on. Ruhi utahatli now on. Right? So I, I'm, I'm doing this comparing these songs in these different makamat to show you that it's not really that the, the Makam family is like, okay, there's one Makam here that's separate. Iraq, Makam Bastenikar, Makam Musta'ar, Makam Sika, right? It's not that way. They're overlapping. And it's really a matter of how much you use of one and how much you use of another. If you're really using mostly Hijaz and you just taste the Musta'ar and the Nahawan, you're still in Hazam. If you're really using a lot of Saba, but you occasionally get this, you're in Bastanikar, right? If you're using Bayati a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and you use this Nahawand, and maybe you taste that Ajam, you don't have to use the Hijaz to be in Maqam Iraq. Nobody else does it except a few people. Uh, you're still in Maqam Iraq if you're using this Bayati and Nahawand and Sika, but you might taste the, the Hijaz. You might taste the, the, the Mustar. You might. Right? You have that option because it's all in this family. It, the family is basically, everything is connected to this Sika Jin. So as soon as you get this Sika, you can do everything here. Can, if you have the physical skill. Right? So this is an irregularly shaped diagram because it's rep representing the physical reality 
that this stuff is central. This is like these overlapping Venn diagrams. This is the stuff that's common in the Macomb family. 90% of the songs are going to give you this and very little else. And all the stuff that's outside this big, this very strong line is stuff that you might get occasionally depending on how strongly you focus on some of these other secondary Ejnas, right? It's the modulation on different Ejnas on three that is the most dramatic aspect of the difference between the Macomb family. But each modulation draws out different aspects of stuff that's above it based on the relationships to each jints. We talked about that in the lesson from Macomb Iraq that Bayati has these relationships, so when you start to do Sika 1 to Bayati 3, you're going to start to pull in other stuff. Same thing with Saba as a Makam, and Makam Bastanikar pulls in this other extra stuff. And for that matter, Makam Sika, in emphasizing the rust, pulls this Jinch Jihadka in. And, and the Nahawand on 3 is not just a part of Mustar, it's part of Makam Rust on 6, which descends. We discussed that in the Makam Sika lesson. The Jiharka, we haven't done a specific lesson on that. That's coming pretty soon because we're going to go back to Makam Rust and, and discuss that. But so anyway, I think I've repeated my points um, long enough, multiple times. Um, oh yeah, I didn't talk about Makam Aujirak. Makam Aujirak is still here. We actually did it without talking about it. It's just when we start up here, and we come down, and we might come down via the Bayati. But Makam al Jirak is in the same circle as Hosan, you see I put it there. And it's just that the important thing is that we're starting on. And then Rust, and then Nahawan Bayati Hijazika. That's a very typical pathway in Aujirak, using the same Ejnas that are part of Makam Hosea. So, all of these charts will be available for free on my Patreon page. I'll upload them, um, and you can get them even if you're not a supporter. Um, but then if you do want to support, there will be, there's extra content for supporters. So visit my Patreon via the link below to download those charts. Some of the charts from previous lessons are also available on the Patreon and a huge thanks to those who are actually supporting the lessons. Um, yeah, these charts. Ooh. Um, let me just do a little bit of an improvisation. I'll do some Leali by myself. You can obviously repeat and copy. to um, finish us out in this Macomb family.
one.